the first Victoria video. I never cared about these because I never really cared about Victoria 3. But now, suddenly, I kind of care about Victoria 3. I'm actually quite excited now. So let's check the first tutorial you guys sent me, Goods and Resources. Hey folks, my name is Ezekiel Cohen. And I run the Call Me Ezekiel YouTube channel, where we create high quality videos. He talks like uh, he, he talks like he's talking to a child. Like, I, I listen to a lot of uh, child stuff lately because of the kid, and he talks exactly like these people. Hello, young one. How are you doing? It was about history, philosophy, literature, and the humanities at large. But most of you probably know me from that time I taught hundreds of thousands of you how to play Victoria 2. Now, I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to teach you how to play its sequel. So no, you can call YouTuber. me Ezekiel. No said otherwise, you this fuck. is how to use goods and resources in Victoria 3. Let's jump sweet, in. I'm actually, fuck, I'm so excited. There are four types of goods in Victoria 3. Staple, industrial, luxury, and military. These goods feed your population, fuel your... Basic food consumed by pups of wealth level 29 and below. What? At the pu so populations have like wealthy and poor and stuff. And if a wealthy population is level 29 or higher, they don't eat basic shit anymore. They want better shit. So if you want a really wealthy population, you need to offer them like really crazy food, I guess. Alter, that's crazy. Look at all these different factories, Alter. Suez Canal, Panama Canal. Holy shit, man. This is crazy. Economy, enrich your people, equip your military. Luxury items consumed by wealthy people level 15 and above. Oh, artillery and give you life-ruining addictions. Okay, that last one isn't so great, but it's not a real problem because I can quit anytime I want. The first use of goods is meeting your population's needs. Each pop has various needs, which they'll try to fulfill. Man, the UI man is very um, mobile gamey, isn't it? I mean, I don't really fucking care anymore. Let's just have fun, but that looks so uh, 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 mobile gamey. Political strength. Population. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get this, man. This game is not gonna be that hard to learn. So so he clicks on uh, demands of the population. What, what is this? Pop needs. I don't understand. Where does, where does it say what the population needs? Like grain. 15.2 pounds. I don't, I don't fucking get this. Fill by buying goods. If they're able to get these goods, then they'll become wealthier. Wealthier pops are more productive, more fecund, and more loyal to their government. Although they will also demand more luxurious goods, which is very ungrateful of them. On the other hand, if they can't fulfill their needs, they'll become increasingly destitute, sterile, unproductive, and radicalized. But they'll also have lower expectations, making it easier to get back in their good graces. Certain goods do get treated a little differently by pops, such as being substitutable like in the case of basic foods, or being more or less likely to purchase them if it's a cultural taboo or an obsession. The British, naturally, have an obsession with tea, while the Chinese- Ah, they all have obsessions, cool. Turmoil, migration targets, taboos. English culture is not discriminated in Great Britain. Cultural traits, Anglophone and European heritage. Homelands, culture of same heritage. So you have the lower class, middle class, and upper class. And they have like traits, like the poor are impoverished or struggling. And they have obsessions. That's so cool. What's the German obsession? Fucking uh, car 98? Opium. Meanwhile, Arabs have a taboo against oh, alcohol. Ah. What does that mean though? If I import wine, they get mad? Or how will that show itself? The other use of goods is to supply buildings as input goods so they can be turned into output goods. We'll go further into detail on how this works in our next video. And finally, for the alleged good of its just people, consume it the government oh, okay. also consumes goods. It does this through Muslims government buildings. Meta? In fact, in all of these supply chains, the very first goods come from your states. Each state has arable land and resource potential. That's what Dave talked to. The, I, w I was calling Dave today in the park and we talked about the game. And he said the game's all about uh, supply chains. It's all about supply chains, man. You got to make sure your supply chains are working. Look at the modifiers. Livestock ranch is 5 out of 108. This is the potential he has. Oh, Arable fuck? land is the maximum amount of agriculture a state can handle. Resource potentials determine what and how much of each natural resource you can extract. Uh -huh. So if you want to produce coal, you can only do it in a state with coal as a resource potential, and you can't produce more than the limit allows. It's also possible to discover gold, oil, and rubber in your provinces, which will add them as resource potential. You know, I'm kind of feeling this the game, man. I'm very, very excited. I'm actually mad excited for this. You can find I'm, I'm getting a bit... Oh, dude, that looked amazing. What is the, the, like a focus tree? Wait. The chances of finding them can be increased with certain technology. Because I... Oh, shit, wait. 
technologies. Because I'm getting a bit older, right? And uh, uh, man, I, I really like the building up style of games now. I like to build up. Oh man, technology tree. It looks very mobile gamey, man. But yeah, a guy in chat said better than the the shitty UI of Victoria 2, the Excel. Weekly innovation, technology spread. You guys know me. I want to play a technocrat. Boiler. B baking powder? Workshops. Fuck, man. I think we should also play this in multiplayer. We should have like a role play game session. Like I get some people together. Like once we learn the game, we have like a session where we come together with some people and we role play this. I think you cannot play a multiplayer game in one day. It's too crazy. But we should probably have a nice little um a nice little role play game, man, where we really take our time. Allergies. And you play can the find movie. information on where each goods resource potentials are, where it's being produced, and where it's, it's being consumed is. on that goods information page. Oh man, I'm, which is I'm most very excited. easily reached. Chat, a question, did they release achievements yet? Uh, are achievements known in this game? Market panel. As you can see, places like Sicily are rich in sulfur, while warm weather crops like coffee aren't really grown in the frigid north. But only the most basic oh, can goods can be link? produced Please? from your states. Oh, shit. Superior I see that. tools, luxurious goods, and the most powerful weapons need to be manufactured. This is done in buildings and will be the subject of our next video. Oh, shit. Here we go, man. Starting as the British India Company fully owned the states of Sindh and Punjab. Starting as Finn and produce 100 tanks every week. Fuck. I mean, dude, I'm actually mad excited about this. I wonder how this is going to perform my channel. I really, really wonder. Like, are people going to watch me or others? I really wonder. Um, starting as Luxembourg, be the leading producer of luxury clothes, luxury furniture, and porcelain. That seems very hard. That seems hard as fuck. Starting as Great Britain, have an anarchist form of government. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mohammed Ali's ambition starting as Egypt from Arabia and own Thrakia starting as Mexico on the Pacific coast oh that sounds mad hard and the Great Plains and have a higher power rank than the USA oy, oy, oy. starting as an Indian have the USA as a subject ach du scheiße dude I don't know this game but that sounds hard as Italy join a diplom diplomatic play against two or more of your allies you can do, do diplomatic plays Starting as Prussia, form Germany and fully owned 10 states in Africa. That's that's to me the most interesting. I want to learn the game and then really have a big Germany campaign. Next. This is how What's you up, use Fabian? buildings and infrastructure in Victoria 3. All economic production in Victoria 3 happens in buildings. It doesn't matter whether it's something small like mining like coal building, out of the I'm ground or raising livestock, or something big like building an advanced warplane at the end stations. of an international multi-continental supply chain. Total War Warmer free patch tomorrow. As long as they don't release the achievements, I don't care. But nice that they're working on the game, man. Thank you for the sub, man. It all happens what in buildings. First country? At its simplest, Sweden sounds a good. building is a facility in which pops of a certain type take input goods and turn them into output goods. These goods don't have to be consumed immediately and can instead be used to create more advanced goods. This process will naturally create supply chains. The products of these supply chains are more luxurious, economically useful, and militarily powerful than their simpler counterparts. Each building has a level which correlates to its size. The higher the level, the bigger the building, which makes it more productive and allows it to employ more pops. So again, I was talking to Dave today and he said a big problem in Victoria Free is you, for example, you built a textile mill, right? And this thing takes fabric and turns into clothes. But if you ever fuck up your income of fabric, the entire production line crashes or some shit. This is something Dave said today. You, like, you have to be so careful with these chains, man. It's going to probably... You need to be a bit mathematical in the head to fucking understand that. Buildings also benefit from economies of scale. So a single size two building will be more- Wait, What the fuck? What? Economy of scale. Many buildings become more efficient the larger they get. Such buildings gain the following effect for every building level. Plus 1% throughput. Your current national level cap for economy of scale is plus 20. I feel like I'm at university again, bro. Productive than two size ones. Usually, you upgrade the size of buildings manually, but you can set them to automatically upgrade when they're both profitable and the construction queue is empty. Buildings fall into three and a half types, urban, rural, development, and construction. Let's start with the half, which is construction. I call it half because this is the only category with a single building in it, but it's also the most important. It's like infrastructure? It's the construction center. Construction sectors are what you use to build and expand other buildings. Now. I wouldn't get too carried away with these. Building materials cost money, so just because you have the capacity to build lots of buildings doesn't mean you can afford Dude, the first 10 hours, to. I'm Don't do get something silly game, like bro. build more construction sectors than you have the budget to use. Next are development buildings. This includes military buildings which raise and equip your armies, and infrastructure like ports and railroads. Ports increase infrastructure and produce convoys, while railroads increase infrastructure and produce transportation. Next more are like rural buildings. Hours? 
If I can be 100% honest from what I saw from Wiki 3, I personally won't like it compared to Wiki 2. It's always with Paradox like this. If you like an old Paradox game, like you're really into it, you will never like the new one. Because the new ones are always a bit simpler. Because Paradox wants to make money. In my case, Crusader Kings, right? I'm, I love Crusader Kings 2 to death. I, I, I was so deep into that game. And obviously, CK3 could never keep up with that. For you, that's Wiki, right? These tend to... I would even think someone that loved Hoi, Hoi 3... They probably have a problem with Hoi 4, but the problem is if you like Hoi 3, you're probably the biggest retard working on this planet, and you should probably live in a retirement home. Oh, that was toxic. Produce sorry. more basic goods. Not sorry. Food, what? cash crops, coal and metal, and so on. They're also limited by state's arable land and resource potentials. One thing I will, I think I'm going to like about this game, there's probably a button in Wiki 3 where you see the world economy. And you can try to to make a monopoly on something. That's going to probably be really fun, man. Like, I'm imagining playing Arabia or something, and you want to make, I'm the boss of oil or something. That's probably really fun to do. Like, becoming a monopoly on something. That, that sounds mad interesting. Thank you, Captain Carlson's, man. What's up? Dude? This is also where you'll find some stressful, man. Maybe I should do that. Pops soon. who can't find a building to work in will automatically. Tell me in a sec how to do it in Mickey 2, but let's watch the video. build and work on a subsistence farm. But you really don't want them to do that because they hardly produce anything. I don't understand. If I make a subsistence farm, I get all this stuff? I get liquor, fabric, wood, all of it? The only benefit to subsistence farming is that it's literally better than nothing. At the start of the game, most of the world will be living and working on subsistence farms. Finally, we have urban buildings. This is where you'll find the advanced stuff like factories, government administrations, and universities. The latter two are worth special mention because government administrations are what produce all important bureaucracy and tax cap- They give you bureaucracy and taxation capacity. But they need paper. I, this is what Dave talked about today. When I was calling Dave, he said this building is fucking crazy. Because if you're out of paper, your entire taxation crumbles and your entire country dies because you're out of money. Because you're out of paper or some shit. He talked about that today. Capacity. While universities are vital for researching technology. The urban section also features like a very unique man. building called the urban paper. center. Most buildings just by... This game really feels like a game you don't even, you don't even have to go to war, man. Existing, you can just play the urbanization. industry style. For every Fuck, 100 like units this, of urbanization, you get one free level of urban center in that state. The types of buildings you can construct are determined by your that technology. Cool. The relevant technologies are mostly in the Fuck. production tab, but all technologies, including society tax, are relevant here. This is because each building has production methods which can modify their efficiency and output. There's three From different the same types screen, of cannon You can modify level? the building's owner too. This There's determines who gets the building's dividend, oh which is a God. fancy way of saying it's profits. There are multiple society technologies that allow you to- Dude, what developer looked at this and felt like, yeah, that's fucking cool to to sell a million copies out of? Thank you, Bovril, man. Thank you for all the subs, Twitch Prime, and a crime. Change who what owns and thus profits from a building. So that's it for your local economy. Jesus but almighty. you're not an isolationist, are you? There's a whole big world out there, and it has goods and resources unavailable in your little corner. But before you get too excited, we're not going to go over there and take those goods by force. At least not yet. First, we're going to learn how to do it consensually. Okay. So up next are markets and trade. I'll see you then. Markets and trade. Okay, guys, uh, send me the video. We're going to check in a segment. Trade and markets. Let's... Let's be confused as fuck, let's go. Markets in Victoria 3 are great, because when you run out of money on the real stock market- Yo, what is my stock market doing? I haven't checked in ages. Dude, everything is crashing right now. I'm genuinely fucking contemplating leaving the stock market a bit. Like, I don't know, I've, I'm a bit fed up with the stock market right now. Young investors like me and maybe you, going to the stock market is really dumb because of Corona and the war and everything is fuck. Yeah, my stocks are super fucking washed up, man. It's always 50-50. And I don't know, I'm reaching this point where I, I'd rather put my money into my apartment, which is a real thing that really exists, and I'm a little bit, yeah. But I, I shouldn't sell low, so I'm just keeping it. Thank you, Vasers, my brother. Appreciate it, dude. Market, you can lose buy fake money by speculating low. in game. You see, if Ludwig von Mises taught us anything, it's that centrally planning an economy is not only difficult, it's literally impossible. Without market prices, economic decisions are beyond human capacity. This is the world market. Sell orders, buy orders, balance, market price. And then you see if a price is like good. Almost For example, years and selling paper is pretty is cool right now. Love. I wonder how that will work. Like, how do I put paper on the market? Is there like a button where I sell, hey, I'm, a, I'm willing to pay 20% of my paper or something? Or This same concept remains true in Victoria 3. Good no. price determined by supply and demand. 
These crazy prices are unique to shit. each market, crazy, crazy which has its own man. supply and demand of goods. By default, each country is in its own market, but it's possible oh. to create multinational markets by having subject states and by creating customs unions with free states. Oh, that's cool. For example, the United I, Kingdom British starts the game insane. with a particularly large multi-continental market, wow. which is useful for reliably... I don't know much about this game, but I would guess that Britain is the OP number one bitch boy in the game then. Like, Britain is, is its the industry. boss. Such is the benefit of having colonies all over the world. But you're not even limited to just your multinational market, because it's possible to conduct unilateral trade with any qualifying nation. Oh, this is done man. via trade routes. A trade route can be used to import a good into your country or export goods to another. This means that if your market isn't making enough food, you can import the deficit from somewhere else. You can see what this goods you're short on and by how much from the trade screen. Similarly, you can also use this screen to see what goods your market is overproducing and export them for a profit. Trade routes. Nice. Oh, that's what I was looking for. So I'm going to be a big fan of this uh, uh, mobile game <laughs> UI, the market. And I'm like looking at what I overproduce and then you probably press a button to sell. Cool. That's probably, that makes a good player selling your overproduced stuff. You probably should look at this um, UI very often. ...aren't free though. To maintain them will take up bureaucracy. This is the and if your nations don't, don't have a land connection down. between That's each other, they'll take up convoys too. Trade routes are also subject to international... Why does the market have productivity? I don't even know what that means. Diplomacy. So don't import your national food and weapon supply from a country that you're about to go to war with. Makes sense. Or one who hates and may embargo you. Trade routes can take some time to come online. Each trade route starts at level 1, which means it moves only a low volume of goods. Its level, and thus the volume of goods it transports, and will increase if the route stage. is profitable <laughs> and decrease if it loses money. Trade centers, which are a development building, will automatically be created and destroyed in proportion to the needs of your trade network. Regardless of Dude, whether you're importing so or exporting learn, goods, Fuck. you're very likely to profit off of trade routes via tariffs. Although, since tariffs are a tax on your pops, it's not actually making you richer, it's just moving some money around. But none of this even matters if your goods can't make it to market, and that's what market access is for. But again, I, I really believe I'm gonna love this game, because I, I like the nation building aspect of games. Each state has a market access- Like I always said this man, I love Hoi 4, I like the war man, okay, this channel is built on the war. But I always love the build-up face in Hoi 4. Trading. Like, even back in the day in StarCraft 2, I love the build-up face. I really love that shit, By default, man. it's at 100%, which means that it's functioning normally. However, each state has a limited amount of infrastructure, and buildings need that infrastructure to operate. If the total infrastructure usage exceeds the supply, then the state's economy will suffer penalties in proportion to how overused the infrastructure is. To increase market access in coastal states, you can build ports, but inland states will need railroads. So now that you finally have a functioning economy, it's time to tax the hell out of it, and spend it on something silly. Ideally, a giant military.